Okay, I am gonna prove the product rule. I don't know why. I hate proofs. I think they're stupid. I don't know. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do something different. So I'm gonna get a little theoretical. Uh, before I do that, um, basically what's gonna happen is, you know, I mean, we know the product rule. I mean, it's in this form right here. Um, you know. Uh, before we get started, though, I, I'm going to set up a difference quotient, okay? And I want to just kind of just kind of look at this, okay? So let's say that you know here, right here, this is you know this is this is x, okay? And it's not completely straight, but but what's this point right here? That is x, and that's f of x, g of x, right? Okay, so, and then if I have my other guy go in there, my, uh, you know, this will be my X, X plus H guy, then this point right here, well, I don't even know if I have enough room to write it, that'll be X plus H, F of X plus H, G of X plus H. kind of a nasty looking point, right? So let's zoom out a little more. And so, so basically, if I wanted to, you know, find the derivative, first I'd have to find the slope of that line and then I'd take the limit as, um, as h uh, goes to zero. So let's just go ahead and set it up right now. So basically, the difference quotient in this case would look a little different And then it would just be x plus h minus x would, would just be h. So this would be, so this would just be like the average rate of change right here, okay? Because, I mean, that's all that is, really. That's just, you know, y2 minus y1 over x1 minus, or x2 minus x1. I mean, that's the same thing I did right there, okay? It just looks weird because our function is actually, you know, h of x was composed of, uh, you know, f of x times g of x, okay? So I think that is probably the, that's like the fundamental um, part of the understanding. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and say that the limit of h goes to zero of f of x plus h, oops, x plus h, Okay, so we have that, and the next thing I'm gonna do is just gonna blow your mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna do nothing to this equation right here, this difference quotient. The only thing I'm gonna do to it is I'm gonna add I'm gonna add exactly zero to it. I'm gonna add f of x plus h Okay, look at that. See that? I mean, what what is this? If we perform this operation, this is zero. Okay, f of x plus h times g of x minus the exact same thing. That's zero. However, it actually is pretty much the you know the uh, it's what makes this whole thing work. It's also what makes this whole thing a very long equation. And actually, I just stuck this thing right in the middle, okay? I just tacked it in right behind. It just went in right behind this guy right there, okay? Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but I have to write small for this stuff to work. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got an f of x plus h right here, so I'm going to factor that out. Okay, 
Okay, if I do that, what am I left with? I'm left with just a G of X plus H. Okay, and now on the other side, if I look over here, I have a G of X common to both of these, so I'm going to factor out that G of X. Okay. And then I'm just left with F of X plus H. Okay, right there. I guess technically I want to put brackets around that whole thing. Uh, now since I'm running out of paper, okay, we're probably just going to go to a new sheet. Okay, and that's okay. But actually right now is when we actually go ahead and take the limit. Okay, so, but before I take the limit, I'm going to rewrite this. Um, Basically, you know, this is this is basically a, f a fraction, right? So I can actually just uh, I can go ahead and put x plus h. I can write that over h, right? And I can also take g of x. I can also do that number. That's all I did is I just I just divvied this thing up. I, I sliced it right down the middle because of this plus sign. Okay, it's just like A minus B over C is equal A C minus B over C. You know, same exact thing. Okay, so now we can start uh, chugging here and evaluate the limit. So what happens? Uh, in the front when as x or as h goes to zero. Well th this just turns into f of x, doesn't it? Right here, well we, we still, it is multiplication, so the, the h you know is still there. So that's just the difference quotient for the limit. I mean that's just the derivative of g of x. So we can just go ahead and write it, okay? Next thing, g of x just stays as g of x as uh, h goes to zero. And this is just the derivative of f of x right there. <laughs> so if I want to, all I got to really do is just rearrange this thing. And it works out perfect. So that's how you do it. I guess just to recap, we start with a difference quotient. Wasn't the normal difference quotient that we use to find limits? We, uh, you know, set the problem up this way, okay? And we just basically just did this, and that's how we arrived at this difference quotient. And then somehow adding zero, which is you know disguised as a whole bunch of weirdness. Um, enabled us to do some factoring. I mean, it's almost like cheating. It's almost like, you know, hey, we were stuck here. What do we do? It's all, you know, I mean, that's just <laughs> kind of crazy, really, you know, but that, that stuff happens in math all the time, you know, stuff doesn't work, and then we just add one to it, multiply it by one, or add zero to it, and I don't know, it's kind of weird. So, if that floats your boat, Rock and roll. Doesn't float my boat though. See you in the next video.